What's up you guys, it's Mark here. If you want to master Airflow, you've come to the right place. My name is Mark Lamberti, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer, and I'm the best selling author on Udemy about Airflow. I've trained over 20,000 students across the world about getting started with Airflow, creating complex data pipelines, and more importantly, making their life easier by automating the manual tasks. During the next 10 minutes, we are going to discover a very important feature in Airflow that you will definitely use in your data pipelines, which is the branch Python operator. If you are a total beginner, that's perfectly fine. You are going to learn everything you need about the branch Python operator. And if you already know the branch Python operator, do you think you know everything about it? Let's answer that question during the video. But before getting started, there are two steps that you absolutely have to follow in order to master the branch Python operator, where the first one is smashing the like button of that video and subscribing to the channel so that you will become the master best of the universe of Airflow. Now you are ready, let's dive into the world of the branch Python operator. To better explain why you might need to use the branch Python operator, let me give you a very simple use case. Let's imagine that you have the following data pipeline with three tasks. And what you want to achieve here is to, if the API is available, you want to execute the task download. And if the API is not available, what you would like instead is to execute the task is API2 available. And if is API2 is available, then you will execute download. So how can you do that in Airflow? How can you choose one specific path, this one, or another one in Airflow. How can you do that? That's where the branch Python operator will help you a lot. Okay, at this point, if you want to follow exactly what I'm going to show you on your computer, you can do that. Just by clicking on the link in the description below, you will land on this beautiful page where first you will have to install Docker and then click on the repository right there in order to obtain the Docker file that we are going to use to run Airflow. And once you have cloned the repository with the Docker file, you just need to copy the code right there, then open your code editor inside the cloned repository, which is Airflow-Docker, and in the folder DAGs, create a new file. Let's call it branching underscore DAG.py. And inside this file, put the code like that. Save the file and we are ready to move on. What does this DAG? Well, pretty nothing right now. Indeed, we import the DAG object, then the dummy operator. We define a start date to the 1st of January 2020. Then we instantiate a DAG object with branching for the DAG ID. The schedule interval is set to daily. Default args, catcher parameter is set to false. And we have two tasks, accurate and inaccurate, with the dummy operator. So as you can see, we are really doing nothing. So let's verify what we obtain from the UI. In your terminal, type docker-compose-f, docker-compose.tml, up. Hit enter, and let's wait for Airflow to run. After a few seconds, you can verify if Airflow is running by opening a new terminal and typing docker ps. If you obtain three containers, as shown right there, with the status up, that means your Airflow instance is running. And if you go to your web browser and open a new tab, then localhost colon 8080, then type Airflow, Airflow, you should land on this beautiful page. From there, you can click on branching, then grab view, and we obtain the following data pipeline. So as you can see, we only have two tasks here, accurate and inaccurate. What we want to achieve is to choose either accurate or inaccurate based on a condition, based on a value. So how can we do that? How can we execute accurate or inaccurate according to a value? Well, in that case, we need to implement a new task using the branch Python operator. Back to your code editor, the first step is to import the branch Python operator. To do this, you just need to type from airflow.operators.python import branch Python operator. So now we have the branch Python operator imported. We can use it in our data pipeline. Right there, let's create a new task and let's say choose underscore best underscore model 
equals to the branch Python operator. Then the task ID is choose underscore best underscore model as well. And next, we have to specify an argument, which is a Python callable function, like the Python operator. So here we type Python underscore callable and the function underscore choose underscore best underscore model. And that's it. At this point, we have added the branch Python operator, but still we have to implement the function underscore choose underscore best underscore model. So let's do this right there, just before the instantiation of the DAG object, type def underscore choose best model. And now what should you put inside that function? Well, you have to know that the branch Python operator will choose either a task or another one according to the task ID which is returned in that function. For example, let's say the accuracy is equal to six. And we want to say that if accuracy is greater than five, then we want to execute the task accurate. How can we do that? By returning the task ID accurate. So here we type return and accurate. Then if the accuracy is lower or equal to five, we want to execute inaccurate. So in that case, right there we type return inaccurate. So to choose which task you want to execute next after the branch Python operator, you have to return the corresponding task ID in the Python callable function. Now we have created the Python callable function to return either accurate or inaccurate. We have to define the dependencies between the tasks of our data pipeline. So here let's type choose underscore best model. And then we want to execute either accurate or inaccurate like that. Save the file and let's go to the UI. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, we obtained the following data pipeline. We have choose best model corresponding to the branch Python operator, and then either accurate or inaccurate will be executed according to the task ID returned. Let's trigger the data pipeline to see what will happen. Turn on the toggle right there. Let's refresh the page. And the task accurate has been successfully executed, whereas inaccurate has been skipped. You have to remember that all tasks that are not triggered by the branch Python operator will be skipped, as you can see with inaccurate. And if you are wondering why accurate has been successfully triggered, well, if you go back to the code, you can see that accuracy is equal to six. And we say that if accuracy is greater than five, we return accurate. And so we execute the next task with the task ID accurate. So that's how the branch Python operator works. This is as simple as that. But now there are more additional things that you absolutely have to be aware of. Each time you trigger a branch Python operator, two XCOMs are created. If you go to admin, then XCOMs, we obtain two XCOMs. The first one corresponds to the next task that the branch Python operator will execute. And the second XCOM corresponds to the task ID that we returned from the Python callable function. And the problem here is that XCOMs are not automatically removed. You have to remove them manually. And the thing is, if you have hundreds of branch Python operators executed, you will end up with many useless XCOMs in your database. So how can you modify this behavior? Well, you can use one parameter in your branch Python operator. So let's go back to the code. And right there, just after Python underscore callable, add a third parameter, which is do underscore XCOM underscore push equals to false. And by using that parameter, you will avoid pushing the XCOM coming from the Python callable function. So if you save the file, this XCOM won't be returned anymore. And this is still better than pushing to XCOMs each time a branch Python operator is triggered. And by the way, if you don't know what XCOMs are, you can check the video somewhere on the screen and you will learn everything you need about them. Now there is something else that I would like to show you with the branch Python operator. And this is super, super important. If you go back to your code and add another task, let's put storing equals to the dummy operator with the task ID equals to storing as well. And then we say that this task should be executed 
right after accurate or inaccurate. So in both cases, we want to execute the task storing. So let's put that, save the file, and go back to the UI. Click on DAGs, then branching, grab view, and as you can see, we obtain the following data pipeline. Now, what do you think will happen with the task storing? Well, let's trigger the data pipeline. Trigger, grab view, and as you can see, storing has been skipped. Why? Because by default, a task will be triggered only if all parents have succeeded, which is not the case here. As inaccurate has been skipped, storing, the direct downstream task, which is storing, is skipped as well. So how can you fix this? Well, this is where you need to change the trigger rule of the task storing. If you go back to your code, in storing, there is another parameter that you can use, which is trigger underscore rule. And this parameter is set to all underscore success by default, which means if all parents succeeded, then the task can be triggered. In that case, we want to modify that behavior with none underscore failed underscore or underscore skipped, which means if at least one parent of that task succeeded, then storing can be executed. Save the file. Let's refresh the page. Trigger it again. Click on trigger then grab view, and as you can see, this time storing has been successfully triggered. Finally, one very common question, which is, can we execute multiple tasks with the branch Python operator? Yes, you can do it if you go back to the code right there in the Python callable function. Instead of returning only one task ID, you can return multiple task IDs with a list, and then you specify the task IDs that you want to trigger, like that. That's it about the branch Python operator. Now you are able to choose one task or another in your data pipelines. And more importantly, you know how to use the branch Python operator properly with you know, the additional subtilities that we have seen related to XCOMs and the skipped tasks. If you enjoyed that video, please smash the like button. This is super helpful for me. I wish you a wonderful day and see you for our next video.